Yes, and you press the red button. Good job. I uh, Mr. Weatherby's <laughs> exhibition, take two. I'd like to start by uh, welcoming all of you to my first semester exhibition. I'd like to introduce myself in case you're not sure who I am. My name is Mr. Weatherby. And I'd like to thank everybody who helped me with my exhibition. In that case, I'm going to thank myself. Um, if my mom or dad had helped me, I'll thank my mom or dad, but they didn't. I just, they helped me a little bit, I'll tell you how later. And I'd like to thank all of you for coming to my exhibition. My exhibition today is on Paris, France, the City of Lights. Uh, and I'm going to take you through what I'm going to be talking about today. I'm going to introduce myself, which I already did. I'm going to show you where Paris, France is. Tell you about why I chose the topic. The history of Paris. Famous landmarks. Landmarks are things that you might want to visit or things you might recognize. The cuisine, which is the French word for food. We'll show a live picture of Paris right now. And then I'll answer any questions or comments you might have. This is a world map, and there's a big red arrow here pointing right to Paris. Paris is located in France, and France is in the middle of Europe. To give you an idea of how far that is, we're right here. And Paris is right there. That's about 4,000 miles, and jets fly about 500 miles an hour. Um, so 4,000 divided by 500 gives you about eight hours in a plane. Why I chose this topic. This is a picture I took in 1998 when I was visiting Paris. Um, my French class um, fundraised and raised enough money that we had a trip. Hey guys, go to camp in fifth grade. Uh, we went to Paris. Um, so I, I took, I started thinking French in fifth grade. I took it in fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade, tenth grade, eleventh grade, twelfth grade. And then my first two years of college, I took 10 years of French. I went there in 1998, and I went there again um, in 2001. I had a, a friend who was, a, who was going to college in Paris, and uh, I got to go stay there for a couple of days, for a few days. Um, next up, we're going to talk about the history of Paris. Paris was founded in 250 BC. That's going to be about 2,300 years ago. Uh, it was founded by the Parisi tribe, and in 52 BC, so about 200 years later, the Romans captured Paris and sort of helped shape the history we have today. Um, Paris became, started being called Paris in 2012 AD, so about 2,000 years ago. In 585 AD, so that's about 1,500 years ago, there was a huge fire that burned lots of Paris, and as they started rebuilding from the fire, um, Paris grew bigger and bigger and bigger. It started out as a, as a small city, and then it got more and more suburbs, and it got bigger and bigger. It started off on a little island, actually. In 1789, there was a huge revolution where the, the, the citizens of France rose up and fought against the, the king and queen. Um, it was kind of like our Revolutionary War. And then in 1940, um, World War II started, the Germans invaded Paris, and the Germans controlled Paris until 1944, when the Americans and the, uh, the Russians and the British all worked together to drive the Germans out. I'm going to show you a little more history here, uh, a picture you might recognize. I actually have this poster hanging up in my, at my house. I bought it from a person selling posters in Paris, and you might recognize this as the Eiffel Tower, um, but it's, it's the missing part of it. The World's Fair uh, happened a bunch of times, but in 1889, it was in Paris. And the World's Fair was a chance for the people of the world to see some of the, the cool things that you can't, you couldn't see on TV or on the internet because it didn't exist back then. So they built the, they built the Eiffel Tower as part of the World's Fair. I'll tell you more about that in a little bit. Uh, if you went to the World's Fair in 1889, you would have seen Buffalo Bill and Annie Oakley's Wild West show, which is pretty famous. Um, you would have seen the Imperial Diamond, which is the largest diamond in the world at that time. There were lots of opera performances and it lasted for over 50 days. And this is going to lead into uh, my next topic which is going to be famous landmarks. 
first famous landmark is the Eiffel Tower, named for Gustav Eiffel, the guy who designed it. It was uh, built for the 1889 World's Fair, and guess what? The people in France and Paris, they didn't like it. They thought it was ugly. They wanted it taken down. But now when you think of Paris, you think of the Eiffel Tower. Um, it's 1,063 feet tall. It's as tall as an 81-story building. So 81 floors. It's got three floors you can get off on. There's one there, one there, and there's one there. Um, and it's had over 200 million visitors so far. That's like everybody in the city of Detroit visiting it 200 times. It's a lot of people. The next famous landmark is a church, a cathedral. It's called Notre Dame. It might look like Notre Dame if you, you know, follow college sports, but this is Notre Dame, which is uh, French for Our Lady. And it is a very famous church that was built in 1163, so about a thousand years ago. But it wasn't finished until 1345, so it took them almost 200 years to finish it. Uh, there's a really famous window right here. It's called the Rose Window. It's this huge, beautiful stained glass window. And why you might know this church, um, although it's not a true story, the Hunchback of Notre Dame they made cartoons out of it, books out of it. That takes place in this church right here. There are, I think, five huge bells up in the church, and that's where the story takes place. Uh, next up is another church. There are lots and lots of churches in Europe. This is one of my, one of my favorite places in Paris. And this is called... Sacre Père, which is uh, I think French for I think, Sacred Heart, and it's located uh, on the top of a place called Montmartre, which is the highest part in Paris. And it is, it's a church, or a Catholic church, but people just go there and hang out because you can go up there and climb up the steps and you can see the whole city. Um, there are lots of people selling things. It's kind of like a market and there's vendors and it's just a fun place to hang out. It's a little ways out of, this, out of the downtown, but it's, uh, it's a really fun place, a really beautiful place. The last famous place that I want to talk about today is uh, the Louvre, the Louvre, uh, and that it started out as a palace or a castle um, built in 1,200, so about 1,000 years ago, and they worked on it again in 1546, so about 500 years ago, and it was the, it was the palace for the, the king. Um, but more recently, it's become an art museum. Um, with some of the most famous pieces of art in the whole wide world. Um, the one that I thought you might recognize um, is one called um, the Mona Lisa. Oh, yeah. So the Mona Lisa is located in, in this art museum, and everybody loves Mona Lisa. I can't tell you why. I think she's kind of scary looking. The picture, the picture is about this big. Um, I don't know why everybody loves it, but everybody loves it. And it's, and it's saved there. Um, you can go up and see it. It's through a bunch of thick glass. Um, there's other famous things you can see there as well. The last thing I want to talk about today is the cuisine, the food. French people love food. Um, they have great food. This is a cafe. They have lots and lots of cafes in Paris. And cafes are restaurants that are inside and outside. And you sit out there, and it's an event. You can spend hours and hours sipping your coffee, uh, hanging out, talking with friends, and eating delicious food like I'm going to show you here. Uh, the first thing you might recognize, I tried to make food you'd recognize. Um, there's some more bizarre things with snails, and I wanted to show you things you've seen. The first one is a croissant. Um, buttery, we like to put jam on them. They're delicious. Uh, you, you might have seen this before, this is a long piece of hard bread with a very really soft center, it's called a baguette. Uh, in France, they like to take whole baguettes and like slice them in half and then slice them open and just pile meat and cheese inside them. Uh, I'll show you some more about cheese in a second. My personal favorite, it's hard to see in the picture, it's a pastry, it's kind of like a croissant, but it's got this really, really dark chocolate in it. And they're just delicious, they're, and they're called uh, pan au chocolat, which is French for bread with chocolate in it. Um, if you go to a place uh, like Panera, there's Panera's around Detroit, that area, they have, they have these, you can get them there, and they're, they're delicious. They're not as good as you can get with there, but they're still good. Um, this looks gross, 
I think. Um, this is cheese in French, we call it fromage. Um, this is a, like a brie, and brie has a hard shell on it, but it has a really gooey center. You take a baguette, and you can slice it off or rip it off, and you can scoop the brie out. It looks gross, but it actually tastes really good. You don't, you don't eat the, most people don't eat the hard, gross outside. You eat the gooey inside. And the last thing, um, probably my favorite. I make these for breakfast. I would say at least every couple of months. And this is a crepe or a crepe, depending on how you want to say it. And it's kind of like a really thin, eggy pancake. Um, and you put chocolate on it, or you put um, powdered sugar on it. They're absolutely delicious. Um, they have these places called creperies, and, and it's a restaurant that just sells crepes. The last thing I want to show you is, hopefully, this works, a live webcam from Paris. So this is not the live picture. This was the live picture last night when I was making this presentation. So if we click on this, while we're waiting for our live picture of Paris to show up, um, now I'm ready for any questions and comments that you might have. Uh, Soli? Uh, if, if, when you were talking about uh, the uh, palace, mm -hmm. what was that big crystal thing? Oh, what was that big crystal thing? That's a great question. Uh, let me pull it back up again for you. You're talking about right, oh, uh, where was that one? Down here. Right here. You're talking about this, this, uh, this thing right here? Yeah. That was built, I think, in 1986, but for sure in the 1980s. And when they turned it into a museum, um, they had a huge competition to figure out how to make it a little more artsy. And this, there's actually a lot of museum underneath it. This is kind of like a huge um, artsy skylight. It lets the light shine down into the, the museum underground. Oh. And I believe the, it's like a cube, and the cube kind of is underground also. You can see the point coming down. It's pretty cool. Jay Van? Um, you said the um, Oh, my mom and dad? Why? You, something that never told us. you are correct about that. Uh, my mom and dad, um, they, they helped me raise money to go to Paris um, both times. So, so the, they didn't, help, they didn't help me out with the exhibition, but they helped me out with um, the money to get there. So you were the only one who did, to, who did the pictures and stuff? Excuse me? So you were the only one who took the pictures and like... Did the actual exhibition? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm the only person who actually did um, the exhibition. So nobody else did it? No, no one else helped me with this. Where you get that from? Um, I got a few pictures off the internet, but all the pictures that I took off the internet were um, okay for me to use. They said that, that you could use them. Um, Jamela? It's about a suspicion. Yes. Um. question and answer. Mine two. All right. Um, do you have to have 15? I no, my exhibition's been going now for about 20 minutes. I say it says 15. Uh, about 15 minutes. We had to, we had to start over again. Um, so, you know, having about a slide a minute. I have 15 slides, 15 minutes. Um, you can see that I don't have much in the way of words on there. I have a title and I have a picture. I'm talking about the picture. Where you get that? Oh, no. I would get ten. I thought that was too much. I thought fifteen was too much. No, I think ten to fifteen minutes is a good goal. Uh, bless. Are there more famous landmarks in Paris? Oh, there are lots more famous landmarks. Absolutely. Um, I didn't show you one of my favorite ones, and that is um, the Arc de Triomphe, which is a big, huge like, archway in the middle of a crazy city. Um, and I think that's pretty cool as well. Um, but I did not show you that one. I tried to keep it just like the, the four big ones. Um, Amaya? What is, um, 
Grant's, oh no, well, what is Pierre's famous food? What are the famous foods? Mm -hmm. um, the five that I showed you are probably five of the most famous foods. Um, they also um, eat snails and mussels. Um, French food is usually very, very buttery. Not mussels like this. I mean, when you eat a steak, you're eating mussel like, like this. Um, but mussels are um, little, little shellfish, little clams. Paige? Because the whole, oh, there it's popping up finally, I got it. Um, because the, I know what you're saying, because this, um, this part around it looks so old and so fancy, and they have this weird looking glass thing in the middle. There's a lot of controversy. Some people loved it, and some people absolutely hated it. Uh, I think now that it's been there for 20 years, people like it for the most part, but people are like, that's pretty weird. Darian? Excuse me? Open it. Does, does it open? No, it's no. It's a, maybe like 30 or 40 feet. What? No, this isn't open as far as I know. Uh, J Van. Yes, absolutely. Both, both the Eiffel Tower and that glass pyramid people have had issues with. Namaya? How many years did it take to make um, the Eiffel Tower? The Eiffel Tower? That's a great question. Uh, I don't have it written down in my notes, but I believe I read it took three years. I think it was like 1886 to 1889 maybe. I think about three years. Jamela? Um, the glass, the glass right how do you get in? Uh, there are doors, um, but not there. You have to come in from the sides. Um, Jay Van. Um, so the museums are more or less under the ground. Part of it is the museum. The museum is absolutely huge. I mean, it takes just hours to walk from one end to the other. I mean, it's just a huge, huge, huge place. Now, the glass parts are over the entrance. All right, any other questions? Michael, your hand up. All right, well, I'd like to thank you all for coming to my exhibition, and hopefully you all have a better idea of what an exhibition should look like for you. Oh, I, I know you guys always do. Here's our picture. This is what it actually looks like in Paris right this very second. You can see it's cloudy. You can actually, if you look carefully, you can see the clouds moving. Except to the clouds. Um, it is 54 degrees um, Fahrenheit. Is three o'clock there? It is six hours ahead of us, so it would be three twenty-two there right now. Yes. All right. Thank you all for coming to my exhibition.